Hey guys, today we're talking about a pretty sensitive topic. We're talking about suicidal ideations and having to go to the emergency room for them. And so if you guys are feeling down about yourself, if you need help, make sure to reach out for help and get the help that you need. Um, the help is not gonna come to you. You need to go out there and get it. And if you're feeling lonely, I'm sure there's at least one person in this world that would be willing to help you. So find that one person. If you're not able to get yourself help, tell them what you need and they'll get the help for you. But be careful in this video. It is a little sensitive, so just be aware. So a couple days ago, I was feeling really down and I was feeling a lot of emotional pain and to try and cope with that pain i took some painkillers that weren't prescribed to me and i ended up in the emergency room so after talking to my therapist today he said it wasn't really a suicidal attempt but it was a suicidal gesture which is kind of like a cry for help essentially and so we're going to talk about that today so when you first get to the ER, at least um, Kaiser is what I'm talking about. That's the only place that I've been so far. When you get there, they check you in and get the basics of why you're there and what's on your mind. So you get your bracelet, they'll do the your weight and check you into the system. After that, you get your bed and you get to change into your new clothes and they kind of check you out. Um, you get your vitals drawn, or you get your vitals done and your blood drawn and do a urine sample and you wait for the medical doctor and to be medically cleared. So it's kind of backwards of what I think should happen, but you have to get medically cleared even for a psychological thing before you can get help for whatever your psychological thing is. So if I have depression and I'm having suicidal thoughts, have to be medically cleared first before they can do anything else. Uh, you wanna keep track of who your people are in the hospital and who you still need to talk to. So there's gonna be like techs that are just like taking your blood and stuff. There's gonna be the nurse who's your person that you're probably gonna see most and they can help you with just regular stuff that you need. There's security guards probably in there there's the medical doctor, and then there's the psychologist. Um, and there might be another person on like an emergency team or something like that, that might come and talk to you. But you wanna keep track of who your people are, who you've talked to, and who you haven't talked to yet. Um, the security guards are there to make sure that you don't try and run away. And it's kind of awkward with them watching you, especially if you're emotional and they're just standing there writing notes about you, but it's a normal thing. So you're just gonna have to deal with it pretty much. Uh, if you're on a psych pod, you'll probably hear lots of yelling and screaming. Not everyone actually wants to be there, believe it or not. And a lot of people are in a pretty messed up state of mind. They might not be on their meds. They might have some other stuff going on. There could be drug stuff involved. So there might be some screaming and yelling, but don't let that scare you. Everyone's just emotional and they're just trying to get through one of their down moments. Uh, eventually you'll see a psych doctor and they will decide whether they're gonna keep you or not. If they keep you, it's called a 5150 and it's a psychiatric hold for up to 72 hours. So they'll hold you because you're a threat to yourself, someone else or whatever and it's 5150. If they decide that you're okay and you're not gonna harm yourself, they can discharge you. The psych doctor is the only one that's gonna be able to discharge you after you pass the medical. And so you wanna make sure you know who that person is, that you're talking with that person because you don't wanna just be sitting there forever waiting and not know who you're supposed to be talking to. Uh, most of the time, if they hold you, they'll send you to an inpatient hospital instead of the ER so they can reevaluate you. I have other videos on that too. Um, it's called the inpatient. 
Um, you can check out those videos as well. Uh, there's a lot of waiting around for the right person. I had to wait through the whole first night to be able to talk to a psych doctor in the morning. And then I was eventually released by about noon the next day. But I didn't even see the psychiatrist at all until over 12 hours after I was first um, put into the ER. And you just want to make sure that you're clear with them, honest, and I don't want to scare you guys. If you need to go to the ER, absolutely 100% go to the ER. Um, I have lots of videos about inpatient, PHP, IOP, all the different things. Um, this is my second time being to the ER. The first time I got held on a 5150 and sent to an inpatient facility. And this time I didn't get held and I was out within probably 14 hours. So if you guys have any questions, you can let me know in the comments. I don't want this to be a small thing. It's very serious, but I just want to hopefully help with this video and just give you a little heads up before you go in there so you at least know what to expect and who you need to talk to so they can get you on the right path as soon as possible.